we need to have a little intervention. As I've been very clearly reminded the last couple of days with the very generous warm welcome I've had to return to YouTube, which I very much appreciate. A lot of you have taken my advice on buying some of these watches, and um, I want to make sure that I'm being very transparent about what I really think about this materialism luxury goods thing. Um, I've seen a lot of things the last couple of days that have honestly really troubled me. Uh, people making very poor financial decisions, and I feel very uh, kind of uh, um, triggered by it, quite honestly. And it, it, I worry about a lot of the people that watch this channel and a lot of the people that are into watches and luxury goods. I, I see a lot of people making decisions that would make me very uncomfortable and I'd have a hard time sleeping at night, quite frankly. And they are, in my personal opinion, the reasons that a lot of people ultimately stay for. You know, the, the watch community is associated with a lot of materialism and it's become very clear to me there's a lot of people living beyond their means. I was on a, a live stream a couple days ago, which was freaking awesome. Shout out to uh, Archie Luxury and his whole team. I thought that was a great live stream, grateful to be there. Some of the conversation that came up and some of the people were chiming in uh, reminded me that not everybody's probably making smart decisions when it comes to purchasing luxury goods, which all watches are for the most part. And let's be real, nobody really needs these things. I day to day to day see people living beyond their means. I see them frustrated uh, both in my job and on YouTube and spending more than they're taking in using debt to buy things that they really can't afford and then wondering why they can't get ahead and being perpetually frustrated. And it breaks my heart. And so, you know, I'm not a financial analyst. These are just my opinions, but I wanted to give my two cents because quite honestly, I don't think it's that difficult of a problem to solve. And there's just some things that I see that are very troubling to me that I wanted to share my own personal facts of life with you all in hopes that hopefully you don't make some of these mistakes that I literally see people making every single day of the week. One of the problems that happens with YouTube or with social media or whatever is we only are able to see what people portray and we're only able to see where people are in their current lives. So especially most recently, I've been talking about higher end luxury watches, I know I'm going to get asked about this. I'm wearing my Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch right now. And so I can see how I'm guilty of somewhat making this a, a normal thing that people just assume that is a normal part of life and that they should have in theirs. And I would say I highly encourage the watch hobby. I think it's a wonderful hobby. Anything that brings you happiness in life, so long as it doesn't negatively impact others or your own life, I think is a good thing. However, I see a lot of people going way beyond their means in order to keep up and in order to achieve the normalcy or the status they think they deserve at the point in the life that they are. And I'm coming from a place, my personal story, you've obviously, if you stuck with me, seen me grow through this channel over the years. I've built everything I have now from the scratch, from, from nothing. I've been working since I was 12 or 13 years old. I've had multiple minimum wage jobs. I graduated during the last massive recession. I struggled to find a job. I did customer service gigs. I made less than great income and I've literally worked my way up both uh, work-wise and financially to where I'm at now, which I consider myself to be relatively comfortable. I say that, however, every day I see people making, you know, entry-level income and jobs fresh out of college as an example, buying luxury goods, even I wouldn't entertain buying now. I mean, it blows my mind what people are willing to take loans out on and to drown in debt over to, to achieve these things. It just, it, it hurts to watch, quite honestly. It's like watching a slow motion train wreck. YouTube is full of these disingenuous, get rich quick people selling all this financial advice and they have some crazy secret about how they're gonna make you rich and it's, you know, audible on Amazon and all this nonsense. If they really had it all figured out and they were gonna sell you something, they wouldn't be spending their time on YouTube selling you their stuff. Their product that's making them rich is what they're trying to sell you. They're basically just making money off of you buying their junk. There is no get rich quick scheme, get rich scheme. Nobody gets rich overnight unless they are born into wealth or they win the lottery, which your odds are more likely to get struck by lightning. This takes work. It's actually a very predictable way to build wealth. You need to spend less than you take in and you need to save money over time. And as you are able to save more money and put it into things that are actually assets that increase in value, 
or at least maintain your quality of life, your home, potentially the stock market, potentially CDs, potentially bonds, other things. Again, I'm not here to give you advice about this stuff. You'll build wealth over time. It's a very predictable model. Buying Louis Vuitton bags and, you know, Breitling watches on your credit card is not a pathway to become rich. Quite the opposite is a pathway to burn money. And unless you're in the capacity to be able to just get rid of money and not worried about it, which is great. And if you are, congratulations, that took a lot of work. You're asking for trouble. What's so sad about this is I watch YouTube these days and social media. A lot of these people that are living this quote unquote lifestyle that are buying all these luxury goods, they're broke. How do I know this? Because the wealthiest people that I've ever met in my life, you would think that they were poor. They shop at Walmart, they shop at other stores, they wear normal clothes, they drive relatively normal cars. And if they have fancy cars, they uh, have achieved a level of wealth of multi, multi millions typically or more. And they bought them because they like them, not because they want people to see them as wealthy. The people that I typically see that are wearing designer clothes and have the newest fashion or driving the newest luxury cars, at least the ones that I interact with day to day, I know what a lot of them make and they're living way beyond their means and they're racking up a lot of debt so that people will respect them and see them as successful. What they're really doing is guaranteeing they're never going to be successful and they're always going to be broke. And then they can never seem to figure out why they're constantly broke and why they're constantly struggling. Your income is your best, method, your best method of building wealth. And if you're dumping your income into things that you don't need with high interest, you're never gonna have wealth. I can almost guarantee it. Two stories this week that just really set me off. Quite honestly, tied to cars. I'm a big car person if you know anything about the channel. And I cannot believe that people would think that this is an okay way to live their life. And I cannot believe that people do this stuff not realizing the damage that they're ultimately gonna cause themselves in the long run. So two stories stand out to me just from this week. One, I watched a post about a woman who voluntarily had her Range Rover repossessed because it had a mechanical issue. It was $10,000 or whatever to fix it was. She couldn't afford to fix it. And she had a, a seven year note on it and she was financing it. And she basically had it voluntarily repossessed because she couldn't afford to fix the car. Um, I don't know what her income level is, but given on her age and where she lives and just other things I saw about her life and the fact that, I mean, most clearly, evidently, she can't afford to repair the thing tells me that she has no business <laughs> uh, taking out a $50,000 loan on a pre-owned Range Rover and then having to go through this whole situation where she has to get it voluntarily repossessed. That is a financial disaster. Another story that sticks with me for a very long time, a gentleman who I used to work with, he was making pretty good money. However, he was he had over a million dollars in real estate that he was investing in, he was getting loans on. He bought a $130,000 Porsche. He had another Porsche and his wife had a Mercedes ML and there was some other stuff he'd bought into as well. And then he lost his job. And I remember telling him when he was going through all this stuff and buying all this stuff, I don't know how he got approved for this stuff, but I'm like, hey man, <laughs> that's a lot of risk you're taking on right now that you're gonna have to potentially you know, deal with. And his pushback to me was, they can't collect it when I'm dead. So his whole goal was to take out as much debt as he possibly can and just keep living life. And that's what he did. I used to see him shopping at luxury stores and buying luxury clothing and stuff all the time. This is literally a slow motion car wreck. I don't understand the mindset behind this. And so now that I've kind of ranted, let me, let me kind of show you my facts of life. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. However, these things have worked very well for me and you know, free advice from me to you that I think is worthwhile. One is my overall philosophy. I'm not the only one that shares this is if you can't pay cash for something, you can't afford it. Specifically, if you can't pay cash for something you don't need, it's not a necessity of life. You absolutely cannot afford it. I'm talking within the context specifically to this channel, uh, luxury goods, watches, cars. These are not investment instruments. I know that since COVID, all these watch channels have shown up and people have talked about watches being investments. They're not. Sometimes they go up, usually they go down and they are nowhere near as reliable as sinking a bunch of money in the uh, stock market as an example. And quite honestly, if you time the things wrong, you're gonna get burned. And I keep being reminded of people that are taking out these additional loans to buy this stuff. These are not investments. And if you're gonna go take a loan on an appreciating asset, a car, a lot of watches, I know that some can go up in value, majority don't. 
if you're taking out a loan, you're not only paying the cost of the watch, which you clearly can't afford because you would have paid cash for it, you're also paying even more for it on top of taxes and other fees, you're paying interest, probably 20% interest on your credit card. And then I hear people say, well, I'm getting 5% cash back. Believe me, they're making more money of you off in the long run, having you pay the minimum payments on that credit card. The 5% cash back is nothing to them. If credit cards were losing money on your cash back, they wouldn't be giving it to you. If you're going to use a credit card as a way to buy things and that's your, your option, the best way to use a credit card, again, my opinion, not a financial advisor, is treat it like cash. If you can't pay it off every month, you're only going to potentially burn yourself in the long run. I'm very hesitant about people using credit cards if they can't pay them off immediately. Again, my two cents, not a financial advisor, but you're basically overpaying with the interest on this stuff and you're buying stuff probably well beyond the means of what you should be affording anyway. And it's just a, it's a cocktail for a disaster. There's also this misnomer that most luxury goods are like higher quality. I used to believe this thing as well. Let me be clear. There definitely are true things to this, this rule. I do think luxury watches, there definitely are watches that higher tiers, you are getting higher quality. It doesn't mean you're ever getting higher utility or they're more useful to you. Let's be real. If you just need something to tell time, buy a G-Shock or use your phone. The difference between a Long and Zona versus a Rolex versus a Seiko Presage is the level of you know, craftsmanship that goes into it in terms of how the movement is hand assembled and detailed and stuff like this. Things that if you have the money to spend on it are beautiful things to behold, but they don't add to their utility and you're not going to get any additional value out of the pleasure of just knowing that they're built to a different standard. A lot of this stuff though, especially clothes and some of these higher end luxury cars are not built any better than stuff that is normal priced. Quite the opposite. A lot of luxury cars are going to last you even less <laughs> time than their more affordable Toyota Honda equivalents. And they're basically built to require very expensive maintenance, very consistent maintenance. And as an example, I know people that spend over a thousand dollars for oil changes on a Porsche. Absurd, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And a lot of these people that I know really can't afford this, love to tell people how much they overpaid for this stuff, as if that's some badge of honor that you're, you're good at wasting money. I don't understand this. There was some big thing a year ago about Dior handbags costing $50 to make when they're selling for thousands of dollars. You're paying for exclusivity. You're, you're, you're falling into the marketing trap. I used to be in marketing. This is how marketing works. You create a sense of demand. You create a sense of desirability and rarity and make things hard to, to get a hold of. Rolex is playing this game now and people go for it. And everybody's, you know, victim to it somewhat. I still want a Rolex too. I'm, I'm on a waiting list right now. However, I'm not gonna go buy one with that. And I'm not worried about the quality of my life depreciating if I go buy something like this. And if you are worried about those things, you shouldn't be looking at these things. Quite simply, if you're not saving money and if you're not spending less than you're taking in every month, and that, extra, and that difference between what you're taking in and what you're spending is on things especially that you really don't have any need for. They have no value in terms of the quality of your life. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life. You're basically going to accrue debt and you're going to be coveting these trinkets that are going to only depreciate in value over time. Look at a BMW 7 Series as an example. I see so many people rolling around in these like four or five year old BMW 7 Series. $120,000 cars new. A couple years old, they're worth 20 or $30,000. Why? Because people know their maintenance nightmares. And then at some point, if you couldn't afford the car new, you definitely can't afford to maintain it when it's used. Not a great way to save money. You don't need it um, unless you just have, you know, money to spare, which is great. And I, I do absolutely understand that. But if you don't, you shouldn't be driving one of these cars. You should be driving something economical and reliable. Otherwise, you're just asking for pain. Here's the deal. There are always going to be people that have more than you. It is a never ending perpetual game. And if your goal is always to keep up with the latest stuff and to have the nicest things, you're never going to win that game. There's always going to be somebody that's outdone you on it. And it's going to be a, a self-fulfilling prophecy that whatever you get, once you get it, you're going to want something else. It's not going to give you long-term satisfaction and it's going to keep you up at night. It's going to make you anxious. It's going to make you depressed. And it's going to make you worried about ever being able to retire. I see these people every day and I really hope those of you are watching don't fall into this category. So. I've ranted a lot and I appreciate you sitting through this. I very much believe in the fire movement, financial independence, retire early. I believe you live below your means. You don't eat out every night. You don't go see movies all the time, entertainment, bars, all this stuff. I've seen so many people that make very good incomes that have nothing to show for it because it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And if you're not keeping what you make, you're always gonna be poor. 
I know some very wealthy people that had very modest and you know modest incomes throughout the course of their life and they've done very well and people that have made a ton of money that were out drinking every night partying going on these crazy vacations that are probably never going to retire and are actually racking up a ton of debt it's absurd i don't know how they sleep at night quite honestly my philosophy is time is your most valuable asset it's the one thing the one resource we can't get any more of and if you are not prioritizing savings and prioritizing not accruing debt as much as you're able to, when I say debt, I'm not talking about again, you had some crazy medical emergency that blew up or something with a child or things that are out of your control that you can't predict for. When I say accruing debt, you're self-sabotaging yourself, buying things you don't need with money you don't have, taking on interest you shouldn't be having to pay for. You are never gonna get more time in this life. What we have is what we have. And if you ever want to retire, if you ever want to do something different than the job you have, if you ever want to be able to pick what's meaningful to you and how you want to spend that time, you can't be spending money on stuff you can't afford. So rant over. I'm so sick of seeing all these people struggle. It breaks my heart because nobody teaches this stuff in school. They really don't. And I think they should. It's frustrating. You know, all the student loan debt, all this other stuff. A lot of people fall prey to this stuff, not understanding just how screwed up this system is. Again, my opinion, not a financial advisor. And so as I talk about luxury goods on this channel, and I'll also talk about more affordable things, I will get back to Seiko and others on this channel, because quite honestly to me, they have the same value to me. I find them all meaningful. I wanna make it clear that I don't want you to try to live beyond your means. I'm not trying to sell a lifestyle. I'm trying to sell passion for a hobby. And if you can, again, if it's something you don't need and you can't pay cash for it, you're asking me, you can't buy it. You can't afford it. Don't take a loan out on it. Don't go into debt over it. So thanks for sticking with me through this rant. Uh, sorry, I just got hot and bothered tonight when I, I saw this woman struggling getting her car repossessed. I'm just like, I don't, I don't understand it. So I know I'm very fortunate and I know I'm probably speaking from a place that a lot of, you know, people would say doesn't give me a right to speak about this stuff. But again, as someone who's created my own financial security for myself and, you know, has learned a lot of this stuff Fortunately, early in my life, it just, it, it's so, it breaks my heart to see people struggling through these things. And I just, I don't want people to make these mistakes. I want people to have a great, happy life. I don't want them to fall into these traps that I see so many people fall into. So thank you so much for watching this, this side rant. Let me know what you guys think below. I'd really be curious what your overall take is on this and just how our community fuels a lot of this stuff. And uh, if you do me a favor too, if you think this is helpful, please share it with somebody that might actually benefit from it. And if you have feedback on future videos, please let me know down below what you'd like to see. Appreciate it so much. Thanks.